Christmas Eve and still working on this one did it for a couple hours last night uh, was able to get the timing belt cover um, the timing belt off all the pulleys the uh, tensioner everything uh, the belt didn't look too bad but I don't know when it had been replaced so I was going to go ahead and take care of all of it now uh, catastrophic failure is bad. So, see, I got the got it lined up. No side, any side. Not front. It's crazy. Still got to take off the water pump, which is down here. This is the water pump. So that's going to be coming off next. Got a bunch of bolts there. Uh, overall, it doesn't look bad. So let's do some cleanup. Dirt and grime in there. I don't think I've got any leaks. Uh, nothing current anyway. But, uh, yeah. So that's the crank position sensor there. I believe. Right there. Okay, we are going to get started with the next step. Get that water pump pulled out. Okay. Okay, I uh, had another minor setback We're working with the uh, legacy here. See, I had a stripped hole on the water pump side, so I had to kind of drill that out, use a Gila coil. Uh, got that in, that set overnight. I feel like finished up last night, but uh, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, put some tape over everything to keep the filings and stuff out of there. I'll clean that up, and we'll put the water pump back in. But uh, I found that when I was um, putting the water pump in yesterday, and the bolts all tightened up except for that one. They, I did a two-step 60-inch pounds, and then went to 108, and... Uh, inch pounds and that one just wouldn't tighten up so pulled it out uh, the way the threads were gone I never pulled any threads out uh, so I don't think it was me that stripped it but uh, looked like it had been done uh, before it just wasn't when I removed it I never I didn't notice that so but uh, we'll go ahead and try to finish this up today get it done
Okay, I've got the water pump in. After uh, fixing that bolt hole, I had to uh, we'll do some finagling to get the gasket in there with all the bolts. But all six bolts are in. to 100 inch pounds. The new tensioners in. All the guides and pulleys are in. Torque to let's see, 29 foot pounds for those guys. Uh, we've got everything come together. Get ready to put the uh, timing belt back on now. Marks are lined up. Timing belt mark lined up. Here and here. Here, here, and there. And over here on this guy. There. And the split up here. Okay. Or, uh, right there. Ready to go. We'll clean this up a little bit, maybe wipe it down. Get some of the dust and debris out of there. But, uh, yeah. It's only taken a lot longer. Had some challenges with, well, the bolt being, or the bolt hole being stripped out there. And the heel coil of that. Um,. Let's see what else did I have some challenges with this? It just it's cold out here. It's like 46 in the garage right now. Uh, it's like 20 degrees outside here in Omaha. But um, had to get fluid, so I've got radiator fluid, coolant, uh, pentafrost. Going to mix that up to concentrate. I've got some uh, water to mix that up with distilled. Called for deionized or distilled. I'm not sure. On the bottle it says deionized. On the data sheet, it says distilled. So we're using a reverse os. Well, it is steam vaporized, distilled, debacteria, you know, bacteria, and a couple other things to remove bacteria in there. So hopefully this will be good enough for this. But I'm sure this thing with 156,000 miles or 155,000 miles around there. Uh, We've had it for a while, but I'm sure before we had it, had some rough stuff. Um, evident by that water pump bolt. But uh, yeah, ready to keep this thing going and get it started back up, move it on, uh, get the Outback in here and do some work on it. So uh, more later. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, well... It only took me a lot longer than it should have, but as cold as it is, well, maybe that's where it goes. But got it lined up. Got the marks. Please be lined up. Yes. Got it lined up here. Gotta make sure you're on this side of that lip of uh, that one. I'll wind up there. Uh, the water pump. I don't have the tensioner released yet, but it's on. It's on. Okay. Gonna go ahead and do the rotation a couple times. Make sure everything lines up, and then we'll uh, start buttoning the rest of it up. Two. One stop. Okay, back. Everything went real well this time. So the easiest part so far. I uh, got the covers back onto the um, timing belt area. Uh, I picked up some new bolts a couple days ago. We went to a pickle line, so I picked up some new bolts. They had some nasty stuff in there before, so I'm not sure where this last work was done. Put the Grim Speed uh, lightweight crank pulley you see there. This is blue, not my favorite color, but it was a uh, uh, part second. They didn't have something on there that they liked, so these were uh, a lot cheaper. So, yeah, uh, let's see. Getting it buttoned back up. I got that torqued down to Grim Speed recommended 94 foot pounds, but I'm going to double check that before I finish everything up here. I'm uh, going to take a break. Uh, next step I need to do would be to put the uh, 
radiator back in and see where it goes down there. Uh, automatic transmission, so we've got the automatic uh, transmission coolant lines down there. Kind of see the other one hanging out there. I uh, had to trim that one up, I had to cut it in order to get it off. But uh, yeah, that coolant line, upper coolant line over here. Looks like the uh, power steering pump may need to uh, have the gasket replaced and maybe need to replace that hose there too. Looks like it's, uh, it's oil soaked pretty good. But it's 2003, so it's got a little bit of time on it, quite a bit of miles. So, um, see, I documented the miles the other day on my sheet that I do. Uh, looks like 151, 587. Uh, it was the uh, Outback out there that had just went over 156,000. We'll be doing work on that after we get this one out of the garage. So, yeah, this is uh, coming along. So, let's go ahead and get this uh, finished up. Okay, well, let's see. Pretty much all buttoned up. Just need to put in some uh, radiator fluid. Mix that up. Uh, put it in there. Bleed it off. Got to add some uh, power steering fluid, which is automatic transmission fluid, actually. Got to top off the uh, automatic transmission fluid, actually, for the transmission. Had a little uh, leak out when we were putting the... Uh, Power steering pump back in, also yeah, the cool or not power steering pump, but the uh, automatic transmission coolant lines, uh, getting them reconnected, and uh, the uh, cooler on the bottom of the uh, radiator leaked some out, so probably lost maybe two, three ounces, wasn't very much it looked like, so everything uh, came back together pretty well, once we get the uh, coolant in there, we'll have to start it up, run it, bleed it off. We'll check all the lines again, make sure they're tight. Uh, the upper there, new hoses. The bottom down there, new hose. So, yep, we'll see how this works out. So, that's it for now. We'll check back again a little later. Three, two. That part. Uh, what, what part? I thought I had to do that part. Sure. Oh, I'm just here filming. Are you serious? No, in case you see anything, like, go back, go back. Like what? Yeah. Like it starts to spurt out at me? Yeah. Did you check to make sure you don't have any leaks? I don't have any leaks yet. Uh, don't we need to open up the garage door?
Okay, let's see, all buttoned up, everything's put back together, cleaned out the uh, coolant reservoir, get to clean it up a little bit. Uh, got getting ready to check it out, bleed it, uh, start the car up for the first time, and um, that is just under two full quarts or two full gallons of coolant. Uh, a little bit left in the bucket, mixed it up with, uh, let's see, two gallons of Pentafrost A2, two gallons of uh, good distilled water, mix that up, added it to it, also added one partial can, it's about just shy of 10 full ounces because it's 9.8 quarts, so one ounce per quart of Dominator Coolant Boost to help boost the uh, efficiency of the coolant. So, okay, we'll uh, let this set for a little bit. Dinner's going to be cooking and the Ohio State uh, USC football game here in a little bit, a couple hours maybe, uh, a little less than that. We'll uh, watch that and then come back to this probably tomorrow. Talk to you later. Thanks. Again, appreciate you watching. Uh, we are now on Instagram, by the way. So I've uh, posted a few videos of this, or a few pictures of this, rather. So check us out. JWC Motorsports. Okay. <clears throat> well, got it all buttoned back up. Got, uh... And hoses, catch cans, see how it goes. Um, PCV, got it uh, rattled out a little bit. Had some uh, clogged up in there. So it's actually got a replacement on order from Subaru. But uh, that'll be later this week. So one's on the PCV side, one's on the uh, uh, breather side from the come off the valve covers. Let's see down there is the valve cover. Over here is the PCV down there. So still some controversy is the PCV down there. Let's see if I can get a shot on it. Down there. Is that what PCV's at? Or is it right up here? Which is what on the Subaru diagrams it says it is. Well, we got Subaru replacements on order, and now uh, once they come in, kind of get an idea based on which way the air flows. Also, found out that the crust washers on the power steering pump uh, pressure line, so we got replacement on order also from Subaru. But uh, she starts up, she runs, new grim speed, lightweight uh, crank. Um, pulley is installed. Everything seems to be uh, done well. No leaks. So, uh, but time will tell. I have to uh, take it out, test drive, see how it goes. And uh, but now, time to put up the last uh, underbody panel. Three bolts. That'll be in. And. Uh, as they say, shipper. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you watching. Although, hopefully I'll get some more subscribers, but I don't know. It is what it is. Thanks a lot, guys.